Hello, it's Gail at Gail Julie Makes, back again. Sorry, oh my goodness. Had a right panic, thought I wasn't recording, and then I realised that, um, basically, my phone was getting low on memory. So it kind of cut me off. So I don't know where I got to. <laughs> um, but I'm going to kind of carry on from here. So this will hopefully um, not be too long. We're going to finish it off. Um, first thing I'm going to do while I'm thinking about it is I am going to finish colouring Mooch. Well, the bit of branch that Mooch is sitting on, basically. So, let's just get that ink off there. Ink everywhere. Right. So, I'm going to get my paintbrush again. And I'm just going to go over that area in black that Mooch is sitting on. Now, I know it will get rid of his... You won't quite see his paws as well, but... That was what it's like in the first one, and you know, it's it's a dark night, you won't always see everything anyway. You'll get rid of a bit of his tail, but it's fine. So we're colouring that in. Okay, we'll go for that. We'll sort of still see a little bit of his still see a little bit of his tail, and we'll just go over him a bit because I can see. It might just be me being paranoid, but I thought I could see a, a bit of a branch there. Okay. So. How does that look? Yeah, I'm thinking maybe a bit more. A bit more black there. Yeah, that's good. Okay, happy with that. All right. So, last time we were using the... Um, warm breeze because we haven't used that very much and we all love that colour don't we sorry give the camera a knock right so I'm going to carry on I've got my big acetate mask for the moon so I'm just going to use that over the top just to make sure I don't get any of that white so we were doing some blending now I wanted to keep a lighter area around by these trees and but I am going to do a little bit more blending of warm breeze around here now I do like that purple sort of coming in so I don't want to get rid of the purple completely and again I'm referencing my picture here a little bit as well so we want to make sure we've got sort of a good cover further down Um, again, this will this will change a little bit from the Distress Oxides. So go give that a little bit of colour, but again, like I say, we want it to be fairly light. And we'll build up. We want to keep... I tended to sort of go a bit darker purple round, whoop, around this area here, look. So I tended to keep more purple in, so I will probably go back in with the Monarch in a minute. So again, make sure you're covering up that moon. I'm just going to blend in some warm breeze this side. And again, we're going to go over this anyway with the <clears throat> with the Distress Oxide and Spice Marmalade. So, kind of happy with that bit there. Now, the rest of it is pretty much a sort of purpley... A bit more there. A purpley haze and a spice marmalade. So, oh, don't forget about the moon. So I'm going to come in with a monarch again. Random stamps there. Come in with a monarch. Get a lot of it off on my... Sorry, you can't see that because the camera's moved a bit, but I'm getting a lot of the monarch off on my mat here. Okay. And then I'm going to line up my moon this is pretty important because you don't want to end up with like an extra line around the edge in and then I'm just going to bring sort of darker areas in with the with the purple so we're going for the darker effect around this side make sure you kind of get in the edges I'm just going to give it a twirl to get that whiteness out a bit more off on my mat and then get that sometimes it's nice just to give the blender a bit of a twirl 
and then we'll have a bit more coming out again I'm rubbing it off on my mat a bit more sort of coming out this way try and get a bit more depth in there and blending it to the edges I don't really want any white in it at all let's get a bit more on there a little bit don't want lots blending the edges careful like I say about kind of getting make sure you've got that mask in place and then we're going to bring in the spice marmalade so don't mind if it's sort of darker patches that makes it look more natural anyway so just get a bit more on here just dab on some darker patches like that okay maybe have a little bit more purple coming down there like that and I'm fairly happy with that okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the spice marmalade distress oxide so that's this one here Tim Holtz um, the Ranger and I'm going to get some on my just a little bit initially we don't want lots and I think what I did was I look got that sort of brighty yellow actually I'd forgotten this from going over my moon with the spice marmalade so you see that's coming out quite a nice colour now isn't it but you don't want to just you know go in there going ho you want to get some off your off your actual blender first so just give that shade and effect there and then we can get in there and do the edges so now I didn't dab that off but that's fine because we are going to have some bolder areas but you know you can build it up so don't go like I say don't go in there all gung-ho until you just build up your layers till you're happy with them okay let's get some on these trees and I might go over this a little bit with some gilt as well. We'll see. We'll see what we think of the effect. But it's you know it's coming through pretty nice so far. And then again, this is where we get that nice sort of green tinge come through, which is a nice sort of side effect of the the orange and the blue mixing well the orange covering the blue I should say because they're not really mixing because that's permanent but the inks are permanent underneath but it gives you that sort of light haze doesn't it and they're colours that you might not normally think about putting over the top like I say because usually we go around the edges with a darker colour but I think this works really well to give you that that hazy glow now I've gone over I've got a bit near Mooch there and what I've done is I've kind of taken a bit of his blackness away but I probably will go back in with my ink and just make sure he's coloured in again so he really stands out but that's not a problem you can just go straight back in like I say with your, with your brush to get that effect right so there we go we've got the edge in there so just literally get my brush, nocturne, go back over, although, you know, if, if it was the other side then it would probably look like a glow from the, the, the moon, but it's fine, we can just go over them like that, not a problem. And then what I also did last time was I got a bit of, now this is my brush o. I don't clean my brush very often, my brush brush, which is naughty. And I've kind of got like this uh, brownie yellow now, but I kind of like it. So I'm just going to go in with a paintbrush, get a little bit of brush o, and just go over my moths. I don't want too much colour on them, but it just, as Tracy always says, it just sort of gives you a little bit of depth if you colour them in. If you give them a little bit of a, a brush or a little bit of, you know, elements ink or something, it just makes them, pulls them out a bit more. Okay. 
I will get the pixie pots eventually, but I want more stamps. Put the pixie pots in my basket the other day and I thought, but I want more stamps. So I'm just going to go over those bit. There we go. So, uh, 